With quality brand name products at affordable wholesale prices, Cash and Carry is the perfect place to shop. Whether shopping for individual, business, churches, or more, Cash and Carry is sure to meet your needs. Cash and Carry of Cookville, 931-528-8050. Hitting the road one final time. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Marcus Satterfield Show presented by IWC Cash and Carry. His name, his show, he is the Tennessee Tech head coach, Marcus Satterfield. As always, I'm your host, Dylan Bozzano. And can you believe it? The Golden Eagle football team has just one more road game remaining. This Saturday, they'll take their show over to Nashville to take on Tennessee State. Always a fun matchup when those two schools get together. Kickoff from the hole will be at 3 o'clock once again this Saturday in Nashville. Well, Golden Eagles, a little bit west this weekend. This previous weekend, they went a little bit east over to the University of Tennessee in Knoxville to play at Neyland Stadium. And, Coach, obviously not the result you guys are looking for, but overall, what was the experience like playing at UT? Great experience, great experience for our kids, especially the Tennessee kids that grew up, you know, watching Tennessee play, thinking they were probably going to be volunteers themselves. Uh, wasn't the you know the result we were looking for. We knew it'd be an uphill battle, but I thought we'd be able to compete a lot, uh, at least compete uh, into the half a little bit more than you know them jumping out on us as quickly as they did. But overall, I think we gained some confidence at certain positions, and you know to watch Dantes Bird and, and Michael Birdsong compete like they did, and Malik Call to compete like he did, and our O line to step up and do what they did, protecting the quarterback. I think we can build off that for the final two games. Well, you know what time of the show it is, so you ready to do it? I'm ready. All right, you heard the man. Let's roll the film. Introducing the game highlights, and that is brought to you by Wendy's of Cookville. Tennessee Tech, University of Tennessee from Neyland Stadium. This is the first time these schools got together in 65 years. Got to go back to 1951, last time that the two played in front of what was the largest attendance ever to watch a Tennessee Tech football game, 98,000 and change for this Golden Eagle contest against Tennessee. There's the coin toss. It is won by the Golden Eagles. They elect to defer, and Tennessee came out swinging. Third play of the football game, Joshua Dobbs connects with Josh Malone, 30 yards. He's open into the end zone. So just like that, it is 7-0. Golden Eagles, though, would respond. Third and 10 from the Tech 20. It's Michael Bird's song. It's Dante's Bird. Coach, he goes up and gets the football. Yeah, we, we used a little uh, trickery there. Used some motion because we knew his man coverage to get him a little bit better release. And Mike threw it up, and he made a, you know the perfect throw. And Mike, or uh, Dante's made a great catch on the ball. Very next play. Hey, let's go right back to him. 17 yards. Dante's bird with his second catch. That brought the football down to the UT 33-yard line. Golden Eagles would get it down to the 28. Ultimately would go for it on fourth down. Wouldn't get it. So here's the next drive. Three plays on the first one. Three plays on this one. It's once again Dobbs to Malone. This time for 43 yards. Now it is 14-0 in favor of the University of Tennessee. Back comes Tennessee Tech, though, doing some nice things offensively. Another first down for the Golden Eagles on a second and seven, 10 yards to Chris Cates. Ultimately, TTU would go on to punt in this drive. First couple of drives, we said three plays, three plays. This time, the Vols needed only one. 73 yards, John Kelly, the sophomore running back, not going to catch him. He's going to take to the house. And, and, Coach, obviously, in a game like this, tough to get down this early. Yeah, I mean, it was an avalanche. We knew there was going to be a huge momentum you know, punch from their end. Uh, as soon as the game started, and we had to withstand it, and we did the uh, opposite of withstanding it. It was not good for, you know, on our end. Seven plays, and UT leading 21 nothing. They would score on the first play of the second quarter, but back to, comes Tennessee Tech. There's a second catch by Chris Cates. That came on a third down and five for 10 yards. Two plays later, freshman running back Andrew Goldsmith starts to get it going. 11 yards, another first down, and Goldsmith, he looks sharp in the game. Yeah, he's getting healthy finally, and he's you know back to almost 100%, so it was good to see him make some plays. Michael Birdson, it doesn't matter who the opponent is, we see him do this time in and time out using his legs to create something. Nine yards on a second and ten, so it goes third and one from the Tennessee 26-yard line. And, Coach, all afternoon long, you guys were aggressive, went for eight times on fourth down. Here's one of those. Yeah, and they got us with a field blitz, so we were trying to get him with a little momentum. It was a great play by Yeedy to try to extend the play, and their line slammed it in the direction we were going, so that was a dumb call on my part, but we were not going to punt. Our kids knew that. 35 nothing at this point with another Tennessee touchdown. So we pick it up four minutes to go in the half. Third and eight, 13 yards, longest carry for the freshman Yeedy Thainrat. Golden Eagles get to the Tech 40, first and 10, where Michael Birdsong, he once again connects with Dantes Bird, one of his nine catches. That was a season high for the junior. 
Tennessee Tech now with just the final couple seconds of the half. This is a first and goal from the two. Not going to get in on the first try, nor the second after it sails out of bounds. TTU would hold them to a field goal. So, Coach, 38 nothing at this point. That was a nice stand defensively, 10 yeah, the first that's half. That's big, and that's what, you know, even it's 35 to nothing. Our kids kept playing. They knew we didn't want to give touchdowns in the red zone, and at that point it didn't really matter. But they, they kept fighting, and, and that is a, you know, a character trait that our team's had all year. Uh, that they, they don't look at the scoreboard. They just keep playing as hard as they can. So I was very proud of them there. So that kind of sentiment going into locker room at this stage, obviously down by a fair amount, but kind of what's the message at that point? Just, I mean, again, I mean, we, it is what it is. Nobody, you know, the great thing about it in our process, we talk about it's all about us because, you know, we tell them all the time, be, you be careful when things are going good because everybody's going to tell you how good you are. It's going to end up backfiring on you. When teams are going, things are going bad, it's just going to be us. Nobody's going to want to be on our team and help us out when things are going bad. It's just us. So we're in the locker room. I told them, hey, here we are again, just like Jacksonville State. It's just us. Let's just go out and have fun, relish the moment, the time we had to play in this environment, see what kind of plays we can make, compete. Who cares what happens? If they score, they score. Let's just keep playing and have a good time. Golden Eagles continue to fight, continue to compete. So let's pick it up in the third quarter of these game highlights against UT. Golden Eagles in the third quarter with Tennessee Tech down at this point, 45 nothing. We told you about Andrew Goldsmith. This is a second and 13 from the Tech 22-yard line. Coach, that made it third and one, and you guys go right back to him as he collects the first down here. Yeah, it was huge, and uh, we get to the third and one, and we snuck him in at fullbacks. So we get a little quick hitter and see you know, if we could get in the crease of the defense, and we did, and uh, again, it was. I hope he can build off this game. Goldsmith, one freshman. There's the other freshman, Edie Thainrat, on a third and seven. He takes it 13 yards. Tech would go on an 11-play, seven-and-a-half-minute drive. We get the football back. It's 45 nothing at this point. It's bird song to bird. Let's just do it one more time. That first one went for 13 yards. Coach, this goes for 29. The two had a great game on the same page. And that was, you know, that was huge from a confidence standpoint as well moving forward. We were on the minus two-yard line, and we knocked it out and, you know, Change field position uh, you know, from deep in our territory. Aaron Medley would kick a field goal to make it 48-0. Tennessee Tech on a first and 10. Let's show you more Dante's bird making some plays. Rolling out bird song. He connects with him for 16 yards. Three plays later, third and six from the Tennessee Tech 45-yard line. Jordan Smith, nice to see him getting involved with a catch at Neyland Stadium. Yeah, he's been banged up. Another Tennessee kid, so it's good that he got you know his name in the, uh, in the stat book. Fourth and one, this is the Golden Eagles' lone fourth down conversion. Staying aggressive, it's Michael Birdsong who barrels his way six yards, picks up the first down. You see, that will do it. There was a Marquez Callaway 62-yard punt return for a touchdown. So the final score reads 55-0. But we take you through some more of the sights of that game because, Coach, there was a ton of purple and gold in the stands. A ton. I've been to a bunch of games there, and it looked just like, I mean, other than the uniforms, LSU, I mean, we had just as many fans as the SEC teams do. I mean, we were up in the upper deck. We had the whole corner. We had the band. Uh, it was just, it was great. It was a great day for, our, you know, our community and our campus. And, and overall, with the players, I know that you mentioned a lot of the ones from Tennessee, as we see kind of the final images, and playing in front of a crowd of that big. Once again, it was 98,343 fans there. Yeah, it was huge. And, uh, you know, it, it, it wasn't as loud as it, it's, as the loudest stadium and probably wasn't like Death Valley was that night when Alabama and LSU were playing, but still there were times when you couldn't, you couldn't hear the guy next to you. And that's pretty, I like that sort of thing to experience those things, uh, how we communicate and how important it is to be able to communicate without talking and understand knowing and doing your job and be able to do it at a high level that forces you to do so. And uh, again, I think this will help us the next two weeks. Once again, you see the final score. The thing you have to know, Dante's Bird, we told you season-high nine catches, season-high 121 yards receiving. He ties a Tennessee Tech record for the most receptions in a game against an FBS opponent. So a great game, a great season up to this point for Dante's Bird. Before we get into the OVC scoreboard and standings, Coach, two games remain in the regular season, both against OVC schools. I'm sure you guys are excited to jump back into that. Definitely. Man, I, I would be uh... – I would be upset with myself if I didn't mention our offensive line. Mike got hit twice that game. Uh, you know, so I told our offensive line, you, you've been caught on tape. Uh, you know, Barnett, their big defensive end, was trying to set the record the other day, sack record, you know, to, up, to take over Reggie White, uh, the minister of defense, and we didn't let him do it. And we had some guys knocking him on his, uh, on his tail, and they were playing hard. So I hope our O-line can use this and develop some confidence 
to protect Mike and make some you know running lanes for Yeedy and Goldsmith these last two weeks because that would be huge if they can continue to play at the level that they played uh, in Neyland Stadium. That was really neat to see. Tennessee Tech's game at Neyland Stadium. That was the only OVC game that went out of conference. The rest of them were all in conference. All eight schools, aside from Tennessee Tech, were in action. So let's take a look at how those games fare. It's the OVC scoreboard and standings. That is brought to you by the OVC Digital Network. First game, Murray State wins 41-28 over Eastern Kentucky. Racers have won three in a row. They're 4-2 and two in the OVC. Senior quarter, quarterback Katie Humphreys threw for 331 yards and three touchdowns. He has eight TDs in the last two games. UT Martin, a winner over Eastern Illinois. They win their fourth consecutive, forcing seven Panther turnovers, most in 12 years. Didn't come easy, but JSU won its 22nd consecutive conference game using a defense that held SEMO to zero rushing yards on 28 carries. And the last game, probably the game of the day, 41-40, Tennessee State wins. Those two offenses combined for over 1,100 yards. Get this, TSU trailed by six on its own 19 with exactly a minute to go, went on a six-play, 81-yard drive that ended in a Ronald Butler 21-yard touchdown pass to Stephen Newbold. Coach, that was a heck of a game, and obviously I know you guys got Tennessee State upcoming. Yeah, that was, you know, we were paying attention to it because, you know, Coach Healy at Austin P and I are really close, and I want him to get that first win, and we thought he had it, you know, but it, that let it slip away at the end. But they're playing great, Austin P is, and that was a, that was a great game to follow. As you look at the standings, Tennessee Tech sitting at 3-3. Three and A three. couple of schools in front of them with TSU and Murray State. You guys are about to play both those teams. No question. I told our guys uh, today, you know, we have got we can chip away at it this week. Just go 1-0 this week, and we can move up a notch in the standings, and ultimately we want to win as many as we can and finish as high as we can. It may not be the overall record we want, but we can make great progress by finishing strong in the conference. Well, we're going to try to finish strong here for the rest of the show. Right now, we are going to take a break. When we come back, we will introduce another Golden Eagle player. We'll take you in-depth into a Tennessee Tech practice. And, of course, later in the show, we will preview TTU's matchup with Tennessee State. So stay with us right here on the Marcus Satterfield Show. Wherever, whenever, cheering for whoever. There's one place to go for free OBC sports. The OBC Digital Network. Back here on the Marcus Satterfield Show presented by IWC Cash and Carry. Well, at this time in our show, we always let you know a little bit more about a Golden Eagle. We kind of take you through a story. We've done a number of players on offense. We've done a number of players on defense. How about let's try special teams? He's the field goal kicker, he's the punter, he's a sophomore, and his name is Nick Madonia. Introducing the player profile, that is brought to you by TTUSports.com. My name is Nick Madonia, I am a sophomore, and I'm a place kicker. I am from Franklin, Tennessee, and uh, I'm an only child, so it's just been me and my dad and my mom growing up most of my life. And They've been super supportive for me. Um, they've been there with me throughout this whole process. I played soccer my whole life, and uh, eighth grade year, I decided to try to switch over to kicking. Um, that ended up working out really well. I ended up earning a spot uh, freshman year on the varsity team and played there ever since. And um, I've been going to football games with my dad ever since I was two, to the Titans games. The most difficult obstacle had to have been this year at the, uh, at the Wofford game. That was my first time playing, and uh, it was not a great start to the year. I had to really overcome that. It had to have been, he played here last year, his name was John Arnold, uh, he was the kicker last year, and uh, he really helped me through a lot. Learned how to overcome adversity, that's the main thing. Football's a game of ups, ups and downs, and um, just really how you handle that depends on the player and person you become. I just want to be a better leader on the team, I want to be vocal, try to get my teammates going the best I can. And then for me, I'd like to be uh, all OVC, I want to be at least 80% on field goals, and uh, I want to have one game winner this year best piece of advice would have to be uh, from Coach Sat. He'd always say during practice, eliminate the mistakes in practice. And that really kind of hit home to me, saying like, when I go into a game, I don't need to miss. I can make it. I've done it as much as I can in practice. We have a really fun team. Um, we always enjoy practice. Uh, we enjoy the locker room atmosphere. But when we got to get serious, we get serious and we know how to get stuff done. We have a great mentality going forward. Um, we're really trying to finish the year on a strong note. Um, obviously, we haven't had the year that we wanted to have, but 
Um, the standards are still high. We're still trying our best, and we're definitely trying to get better. Coach, he's a confident kicker, some lofty goals, some lofty expectations, and he's having a heck of a season. He's unbelievable. He, um, you know, we, we fell in love with him early uh, in January when we got here. You know, we do the tire drills, the tug of war. We do the rampage before the game and at practice where one-on-one -on -one hitting and blocking, and we put him in those situations. He loves it. He, he beats. I, I, I'm, I can't throw everybody under the bus that he's beaten, but he's beating, beating some quarterbacks. He's beating some running backs in, in the tire pull and stuff. So he's a tough kid, tough-minded kid. He didn't have the great start against Wofford, but he's bounced back, and he's been unreal since that Wofford game. And, you know, he's a kid. He's going to make a lot of game winners moving forward and some of them to win championships. He's been unreal since that Wofford game. He got kind of mad at me last time, so I'm going to refrain from saying what he's done. Let's just say it's been special after the Wofford game. No question. He just needs to stay focused and keep doing what he's doing and make sure he's wearing the same socks every game. There you go. Well said. Now let's show you a little bit of a Golden Eagle practice. So let's bring in someone who's been with the program quite a while. He's an assistant coach on the defensive line, Sam Williamson. He's mic'd up, and that mic'd up segment is brought to you by Pepsi. Yep. And again, same thing. You ain't, getting off, you ain't getting off the block quick enough. You attacking the guy, you stand on him without getting your eyes in your gap. Attack your guy, get control of him, get your eyes in the gap. You see what's coming, you can get off and make the play. All right? You're doing a good job. I don't, want you, don't slow down your aggressiveness on the guy you're blocking, but you got to get your eyes off quick enough so you can see what's coming in your gap. You know what I'm saying? Lock up. Get him up off you. Get off. Say, go. Right here, get off. Good. Good. One more time. Quick, 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 quick. Violent. Get off. Sit. Go. Bam. Get off. Good. Quick, quick, quick. Sit. Go. Good. Get off. Good, car. Good, car. Sit. Go. Get him off you. Get off. Good. Much. Violet. Good, car. Good, car. Just don't give him no ground, ground, right? Up the field. Up the field. Knock him back. Knock him back. Yeah. Right. Let's go now. Get down the field. Get down the field. Get down the field. Get down the field. Come on now. We got to fly. We got to fly. We got to fly. We gotta fly, we gotta fly. Gotta get back to being the best in the country right here now. Let's go. Get back to being the best in the country. Let's go, Elliot. Let's go, Elliot. Let's go, Randy. Get down the field. Let's go. Be the first one down the field. Be the first one down the field. Fly! Tay, just control your gap, right? That's all you got to do. Keep your hips in your gap, you're fine. Don't try to do too much. Teach, teach, teach. See where the back is. See where the back is. Coach, that, that yell, <laughs> that yell was incredible by Coach Williamson right there. Yeah, he's got great presence. Uh, again, another guy with a lot of energy. You know, whenever I got here in January, I interviewed you know, all the coaches that were remaining on the staff, met with Sam, and I had no idea who he was. I had really no intention of keeping him around on our staff, and I met with him for about 10 minutes, and it just hit me. He was such an, an, an infectious personality, uh, had unbelievable presence. He's unbelievable, you know has an unbelievable bond with the team, and uh, he's really, really been a tremendous help of getting our, getting our organization, our culture, and our standards um, sent through the team a lot faster, you know, with him around. So thank goodness he's, he stayed, and, and he's part of what we're doing because he does a great job. And his defensive line with Mike Kane and Kevin Robinson-White, they've, they've had all conference-type seasons this, you know, this year so far. So hopefully he keeps them going and two more games and see what happens. Well, two more games. We will preview one of those, this matchup against Tennessee State, but we will do that after a break. So stay with us once again here on the Marcus Satterfield Show. What are you looking for? A place to belong? A path to a career? A way to make things better? Do you wonder what opportunity looks like? Explore your answers here. Change your world at Tennessee Tech University. Visit tntech.edu slash change. Hello again here at the Marcus Satterfield Show presented by IWC Cash and Carry. 
It's been an exciting Tennessee Tech soccer season. It's been one of many exciting things going around Golden Eagle Athletics. So here to tell you more about that, as always, TTU Director of Athletics, Mark Wilson. He presents to you the Golden Eagle Update, brought to you by the Tech Athletics Twitter, at TTU Golden Eagles. The stellar Golden Eagle soccer season came to a heartbreaking end in the Ohio Valley Conference semifinals in Murray, Kentucky, against Eastern Kentucky on Friday. After being scoreless through the entire contest, the Golden Eagles lost in penalty kicks. Goalkeeper Kari Nauderman was named the Ohio Valley Conference Defensive Player of the Year. She had named all OBC first team, uh, joining Abby Guerin and Lauren Brewer on the first team. Kerrigan Owens was named to the Ohio Valley Conference second team. And Nora Visick was named to the OBC all-newcomer team. For their efforts in the tournament, Lauren Brewer and Mary Frances Hoot was named all-tournament. Kim Roseman's women's basketball squad began their season with an exhibition contest on Monday night in the Hooper Island Center, beating North Alabama by a score of 72-53. to Akia Harris led the way with 14 points. Adacia Wilkinson had 12 points and 8 rebounds. And Trey Brooks was the leading rebounder with 9. They host Wright State this Friday at 6 o'clock, so come on out and, and, join, and join us and cheer them on. Golden Eagle basketball team, men's team, will be in Atlanta against Georgia Tech to begin their season on Friday night. And both teams are back home with a doubleheader on Monday. Women at 5.30, men at 7.30. The Golden Eagle Volleyball team lost to Belmont and Tennessee State this week by identical scores of 0-3. to three, And they'll conclude their season at Jacksonville State and at Southeast Missouri this week. The cross-country team is at the NCAA South Regionals. Best of luck to them in Tallahassee, Florida on Friday. And tip of the hat to Josh Poplar and Jordan Smith, both from the Golden Eagle football team, and Kelly Williams from the Golden Eagle volleyball team. The three of them were named Cosida Academic All-District. And the Regions Bank Athletes of the Week, Don Tesberg for his phenomenal performance against UT on Saturday. And Mary Frances Hoots and Laura Brewer for being named OBC All-Tournament. Back down to you, Dylan. Thank you, Mark. Great job as always. Coach, it's basketball season here at Tennessee Tech. I remember when you got hired in January, you were yep. a big a fan as anybody at those games. Yeah, I am a basketball guy. I can't talk baseball, can't talk hockey, can't talk soccer, <laughs> but I can talk basketball. I, I played one year of basketball at Chattanooga State Junior College before I transferred to ETSU because I miss football so much. And uh, so I have a passion for basketball. I love it. Love going to watch him practice. I've been to watch Coach Roseman's practices. She's a lot tougher than I am. And I uh, just really love, you know, it was at the game last night. And, I mean, you could just tell immediately defensively the mindset that they were playing with was different. They were fast. They were getting hands on the ball. They were taking charges, getting on the board. So I'm excited. It's going to be a great, great year for basketball. And I'm sure Coach Payne's guys are going to pick up where they did last year. And, uh, you know, I challenge those guys all the time. How tough are they going to be this year, you know, down low? And, and I can't wait to watch what Ricky Cabrera and those guys, they got them, going, got them doing. So it's going to be a great year. Such a fun time of year. Football's still going on, and then you got basketball season. Hey, as a reminder, this Friday for the Tennessee Tech women's basketball game at Wright State, that tips off at 6 o'clock in the Eblin Center. It is Veterans Appreciation Day, so if you are a veteran, have an active military ID, you just show that, you get into the game absolutely free. And as Mark said, the Tennessee Tech men's team will be at Georgia Tech. Well, it's time for the part of our show where we preview Tennessee Tech's next opponent. It's Tennessee State. Kickoff this Saturday in Nashville will be 3 o'clock. So introducing this week's opponent, that is brought to you by the Golden Eagle Golf Club. And Coach, we talked about it earlier, Tennessee State coming off the thrilling 41-40 victory over Austin P. It was a shootout in that game. What do you think as they come into this one? I think that they've had uh, you know a couple weeks where they've been, on, they've been on the road for three weeks, counting Vanderbilt, which was technically home for them. But... I think they're, they're going to be glad to get back in the hole. I know I'm excited. I've always heard of the hole. I've always wanted to play in the hole. Uh, when you play a Tennessee State t uh, game, whether it's in, at Nissan uh, Stadium or the hole, when that band's there, it's one of the most unbelievable atmospheres, you know, including the one we were just at. I think there's more energy at, at the TSU game. So we're excited to get to play them. I think that they're ready to get this bad taste out of their mouth because they were playing at a really high level early on, and then they've kind of hit some injuries and some, you know, hit a wall a little bit. So, you know, we're expecting for them to try to bounce back against us, not bounce back from a loss, but bounce back from a tough game against Austin P. and uh, give us, you know, their best shot. And we're going to have to be ready because they've got two of the best young wideouts in the league, NFL-type kids that I'm sure they watched the Tennessee game and uh, were salivating as they watched it. 
And you're taking a look at the highlights from last year. This was Tennessee Tech's final game of the 2015 season. One of those wide outs you talk about, Patrick Smith, he actually leads the OVC right now with 11 touchdown catches. Their quarterback, he's a senior. Ronald Butler was just named the co-OVC Offensive Player of the Week. He accounted for 342 total yards of offense in all six Tennessee State touchdowns. Coach, Butler, he's a, a cut type of quarterback. He can do it with his arm. He can also do it with his legs. Yeah, I mean, he was a, you know, a really good wideout, too, coming out of high school. And he does a lot of things athletically. He's not just a guy that runs the ball and runs around. He, he has great accuracy, great arm strength, and can push the ball down the field. And the, the, you know, the headache for him is you, you can cover. You know, if we do a good job covering, which we've struggled with, that's great, but then the second level underneath coverage and, and the defensive line have got to rush in a manner with great discipline to not let him get out of the pocket. So it's kind of a mush rush opportunity, as Gruden would call it, when you play you know, guys like Russell Wilson and, and if we played Michael Birdsong. I mean, we don't want to just get up the field and create lanes for that quarterback. We've got to keep him contained. And if anything, we definitely want him to stay in there and have to make throw after throw and, and not give him anything cheap, make him earn everything that they, that they get on offense and then defensively you turn the tape on they got transfers from everywhere they got two big defensive ends they got a defensive tackle that can play anywhere in the country they're second level linebackers they play with speed they got multiple personnel groupings that they match personnels uh, they'll play with five or six dbs at one time so they're fast got great coverage uh, you know it's going to be a tough game but I think our guys are ready to get, you know, this not embarrassment, but this loss to Tennessee, just get that out of the way and move on to a conference opponent where we can go and hopefully compete and do what we do and uh, see if we can, you know, score touchdowns in the red zone. Don't let them score touchdowns in the red zone. Win the turnover margin, run the football, stop the run, and dominate the special teams. If we do that and play harder than them, we'll have a chance to at least compete in the fourth quarter. Absolutely, and that game once again, Saturday, 3 o'clock from the hole in Nashville. Coach, good luck, and as always, same time, same place next week. I'll be here. Okay, he'll be here. I'll be here. Hopefully, you guys will be there as well. This has been the Marcus Satterfield Show. First, how you can follow the game. It's on ESPN3. You can always listen to it on 98.5 KISS FM and read all about it in the Cookville Herald Citizen. That's going to do it for this week's show. We'll see you next week on the Marcus Satterfield Show. With quality brand name products at affordable wholesale prices, Cash and Carry is the perfect place to shop. Whether shopping for individual, business, churches, or more, Cash and Carry is sure to meet your needs. Cash and Carry of Cookville, 931-528-8050.